Where are they now? The great ships. Many gone to sailors' graves, savaged by decay and rust, gone to scrap. And yet, here and there, almost miraculously, private citizens, the American Navy, the American nation, have managed to preserve a few of the great ships. Constitution. Launched in 1797, she was one of the fastest warships of her time, and her captains among the greatest of all Navy heroes. Edward Preble commanded her in the war with the Barbary pirates. With Isaac Hull commanding, she destroyed the British Gruyere in 1812. William Bainbridge commanded Constitution into battle against the Royal Navy's Java later that same year. By now, she was old Ironsides to her crew and to all Americans as she won and won again against an enemy superior only in numbers. The years passed by and old Ironsides was taken in and out of active service, used as a training ship, then a receiving ship, and finally restored to her past glory and put on display for the entire nation at the Navy shipyard at Boston. To walk her decks is to walk through American history, almost from the days of our first president and the fragile, dangerous times of the new nation. Constitution is the oldest Navy ship still in commission and one of the proudest symbols of America's heritage. Near the waters of Lake Erie at Erie, Pennsylvania is the brig Niagara. Not far off these shores, the Niagara, commanded by Oliver Hazard Perry, was engaged in the most acclaimed naval battle of the War of 1812. On that day, her riggings were filled with Kentucky riflemen and her gunnels with gallant sailors. After losing one ship, Perry boarded the Niagara and charged the British battle line. Such a merciless fire was poured upon the enemy ships. They soon surrendered, and from the deck of Niagara, Perry sent his famous message. We have met the enemy, and they are ours. This is the Cairo, what's left of her. Cairo is a relic of the days when the American Navy cruised and fought inland on the vast river system of the Mississippi during the terrible years of the Civil War. She was raised from the Yazoo River in 1956 and plans have been made for her restoration as a national monument. The nation's oldest surviving steel warship is the cruiser Olympia. In 1898, she was Admiral George Dewey's flagship when Dewey, then a Commodore, led his squadron past the Spanish batteries on Corregidor and into Manila Bay. By one o'clock in the afternoon, Spain no longer had a fleet in the Philippines. And today, Olympia rests proudly in Philadelphia. The year was 1912. The ship, 1,000-ton battleship, Texas. A ship destined to be in the middle of the action. In service with the British Grand Fleet in the First World War. On convoy escort in the North Atlantic at the outbreak of World War II. She was in the thick of the invasion of North Africa in 1942. Then, on the 6th of June, 1944, Texas joined the greatest air, land, and sea invasion of history. Laying off Omaha Beach, she pounded the German shore positions. The naval firepower helped carry the day. Without that gunfire, said an Army Chief of Staff, we could not have crossed the beaches. After the Normandy invasion and the invasion of southern France, Texas departed for the Pacific to join in the battle for Iwo Jima, then Okinawa. The old warship was awarded five battle stars and many other honors. She rests today at the San Jacinto Battlefield Monument.
near Houston. While Texas was on patrol in 1941 in the Atlantic, this great ship was just being commissioned. North Carolina, the first of the Navy's 35,000 ton super dreadnoughts. At that time, one of the mightiest warships afloat. Her crew called her the showboat. North Carolina, winner of 12 battle stars and part of the major naval campaigns in the Pacific. Today, in Wilmington, North Carolina, she tells her own story in a proud display of her colorful history. Check fire, up one, double O, lift six, double O. Commence firing. Cease fire. One of the last American battleships was the 45,000 ton Missouri. She lies in reserve at the Naval Shipyard in Bremerton, near Seattle in Puget Sound. On this great ship, on September 2nd at 9 a.m. 1945, Imperial Japan formally surrendered to the Allied powers. We will now hear Fleet Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet. On board all naval vessels at sea and in port and at our many island bases in the Pacific, there is rejoicing and thanksgiving. The long and bitter struggle is at an end. The war that ended on the Missouri began here. Flash, Washington. The White House announces Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. The enduring symbol of that attack is this ship. Arizona, blown apart when her magazines exploded and sunk almost instantly, along with 1,100 of her crew. Now, her hull remains at the harbor bottom, beneath this memorial to the lost men and the great ship. Throughout our nation, we can relive our proud heritage through the enduring presence of these and many other great ships. Now, home from the sea. <laughs>